Hello and welcome to Primary 6's Virtual Library for Term 3 and in this video we are going to focus on fractions. First of all, let's have a look at identifying fractions from shapes. So in the first image here we have a shape with 9 pieces and 3 of them are coloured in purple. So for our fraction we would write 3 out of 9 pieces. For this one, we can actually simplify that down even further because both of those numbers are in the 3 times table. So we can say to ourselves, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have simplified it down to its smallest possible numbers and we now have it as a third. Our second shape here, we have got 8 pieces altogether and one of them is coloured in so that's 1 out of 8. Our third picture, we have got 15 pieces altogether and 3 of those are coloured in. So it's 3 out of 15. Again, you may have noticed that both of those numbers are in the 3 times table. So we can also simplify this fraction. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that is a fifth. And last but not least, our final image there, we have got two pieces and one of which is coloured in, which is of course one half. Lastly for fractions, we are going to have a wee look at mixed number fractions and improper fractions. So the picture we have here, we have got three circles and there are some bits coloured in. Two of them are completely coloured, one of them only half has been coloured in. So we say we've got two holes and one half. That is written as a mixed number fraction because we have whole numbers alongside a fraction. If we were to do improper fractions, we would have written it as halves, so just as a fraction. So if we look at the three circles, altogether there are six different halves and we say to ourselves how many of those have been coloured in. Five of those have now been coloured in, which gives us five halves. We're now going to transform some more mixed number fractions into improper fractions and I'm going to show you how to do this. So first of all we have got three wholes and one fifth. To transform this into an improper fraction you take your denominator from your fraction which in this case is the five, it's the bottom number of your fraction, and you multiply your whole number by that. So it would be five times by three then 5 times 3, which is of course 15, you then add on the 1, which is 16, so it would be 16 fifths. Your bottom number will always remain the same, so it's always going to be 5 because you're working with fifths. Let's try that again at the bottom, so we've got 4 wholes and 2 thirds. Again, let's take our denominator, our bottom number, that's 3 times by our whole number is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, this time you're adding on 2 from the top, so that would be 14 thirds. This term in maths we are going to be looking at different types of angles. In front of us we have the five main types of angles pupils should be able to identify. Um, the first one is a right angle. That is 90 degrees, which can be shown if I measure this. You line up the protractor rightly, 0 to 90. So 90 degrees. Um, and it is often shown as a box shape rather than, as you'll see with other angles shown with a circular shape, to show that it is a straight um, L-shaped angle. Following on from this, we have a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. If you compare it with the right angle, you should be able to see that it is the size of two right angles put together, making it 180 degrees, so it is a straight line. Um, angles smaller or less than a right angle are called acute angles. Angles that are between 90 and 180, so between a right angle and a straight angle, are called obtuse angles. And angles which are more than 180 degrees 
are called a reflex angle, which is shown by the circle going round, well, the incomplete circle going round there. Pupils should also be able to use a protractor to measure angles. So, for example, if we line up this one, um, this angle measures just short of 50 degrees. So we'll say about 49 degrees that angle is, just as shown. This term in primary six, we're also going to be looking at time. Here we have a worded question for us to answer. The question says, it takes 53 minutes to get from Warwick to Snitterfield by train. Louis arrives at the time shown. When did he set off? So the first thing you would do here is identify what time is being shown on the analogue clock. And of course it's 9.29. So I've written that down for you at the bottom. And just to clarify in your mind, always write down how long it has taken to get there as well. So that you've got that to refer to. So arrival, 9.29. And it took 53 minutes to get there. So for this question, you've got to work backwards. You are taking away 53 minutes from 9.29. So to start off with, I'm going to write from 9 o'clock to 9.29, that would have taken 29 minutes. You then say to yourself, 53 take away 29 minutes, how many minutes did we have left? That is 24 minutes. So we then remove 24 minutes from 9 o'clock. And 9 o'clock, working backwards, so 9 o'clock, take away 24 minutes, would give us 8.36. So we left Warwick at 8.36.